us some much needed positivity. I get messages We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but there's so many really cool things today. And one of the main topics I want to discuss today is positivity versus negativity, what a diet actually is, and all the different things that we can really learn from so that we're not repeating the same mistakes generation after generation and kind of really breaking generational curses as well as trying to put our best foot forward to position ourselves for the best possible avenue towards what our definitions of happiness and success look like. Um, and one of those things is self-love. Uh, guys, I have been on a wild, crazy, twist and turning, corkscrewing journey um, when it comes to self-love and being confident in the skin you're in. And that in today's world is so incredibly hard. It is, it's so hard. And to be honest, I didn't realize how hard it was, even though I didn't really have self-confidence and stuff as a child. I had no idea what sort of thing I was getting into when I decided to be, you know, a young adolescent in the pro wrestling industry. You know, I was a fresh faced 17 year old. I was 17 for like two and a half, three months, it not even. By the time I went to my first indie show, I had discovered independent wrestling at that time. Didn't even know it existed, had no idea New England was a hot spot for wrestling. And, you know, and then all of a sudden I'm a valet and I'm in wrestling with like out any training, not knowing how to bump, taking bumps and all this other stuff. And then fast forward to all of the crazy wild things that I've been able to accomplish that most people told me I would never be able to do or wasn't good enough or yada 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 and a lot of that is self-love confidence self-care and learning how to gravitate towards real positivity not toxic positivity and or negativity um, on social media we see so many people preaching about all kinds of things but in reality they're not really even about it. Um, you know, they don't practice what they preach. And that's why I'm a huge believer in not necessarily, obviously actively listening is a huge deal. So like listen to what people say, but pay more attention to and put more stock in what people do. Because people often say and do things that do not add up. They don't match. They don't come together. It's not cohesive. It's not a link in a chain that's strong and is weak as well. Uh, you know, and, and so many people just want to put on this persona to get more bookings, to get liked, to make money, whatever. And I mean, you can't fault people for wanting to make money and be liked. I mean, it's a human thing, but there's a way to be it and there's a way not to. And so that comes back again, as I'm going to repeat this a lot in this episode, self-love, care, being empathetic, being kind. It costs you zero dollars to be a decent human being. I'm not talking about an amazing human being, a spectacular human being, just a decent human being. <laughs> if you want to have your expectations low, just decent cost you zero dollars literally come on bring in that love you know what i'm saying i've come across so much negativity in my life that at times i didn't even think i could stand back up on my own two feet um you know there were there were times where not to be like elton john or anything because he's absolutely phenomenally fantastically amazing in every sense of the definitions but it's like being a candle in the wind and expecting to not get snuffed out it doesn't work that way. You are going to get, you know, blown out. And that's what it feels like a lot of the time, you know. Um, it's so easy. This is what a lot of people don't necessarily talk about, but it's starting to get brought up more on social media with really important accounts that I really want people to start paying more attention to and following. Um, this is this is becoming more stressed and it's so amazing. Um, I, I got so much out of this, of hearing this and seeing it. You... It's so easy to tear somebody down. It is, it is the opposite end of hard to build that person back up. It, it is not easy to bring a negative person up, but it is so easy, tragically easy, to take a positive person, a good human being, inherently good, and drag them down like dead weight. Um, I want to help people find the opposite 
and to learn how to not necessarily be the change you want to see in the world because I think that's been over said, but to be the best version of you every day, you're allowed to be both a work in progress and an inspiration to others. That was one of my main focuses for this podcast is, you know, I, I always found that I was delaying different goals and, and different views of myself because things weren't the perfect circumstance. They weren't the perfect this, the perfect that. I didn't have the perfect grammar. I didn't have the perfect body type for wrestling. I didn't have the perfect look or the perfect teeth or or the perfect personality or people's values didn't align with my own and my personal beliefs and my integrity, different things. Always delaying happiness, always delaying positivity, always delaying my own life goals. For what? Perfection does not truly exist. Um, perfection is so relative, just like reality. Perfection varies from person to person because it's based on opinion. Um, you know, I talked a lot about this on a recent interview that I had discussing Lucha Patron and my career and my books with Nation's Corner on Busted Open Nation on YouTube. Um, I like to call it a recovering perfectionist because I don't think it's very fair to project your own beliefs onto someone else. They're not you for a reason. And that's the one unique thing about you is that you are the only one of you. That is your superpower. That is the one unique, amazing thing about you watching and listening to this right now. That is the one unique and amazing thing about you. That there's only one you, even if you're a twin, a triplet, a quintuplets, there's still only one you and you exist for a reason. Tough times don't last people, but tough people, they do. Um, one of my favorite accounts to listen to and watch is Steve Harvey. I love Steve Harvey and I love Kevin Hart's accounts too because the way they speak and the way they articulate things, in my personal opinion, they make they make such intense truthful content, the way that they say it allows more people to relate to it and understand it in different ways that other people can't connect with. It's a very subconscious thing and I love it. Uh, Steve Harvey was saying at some point I listened to, uh, he said, you know, if you're going through hell, why would you stop in hell and just give up? Keep going. You don't want to stay there, do you? Keep going. Eventually, you will find your way out. You will get out. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. You are tough. You are unique. Um, you are fiercely and wonderfully and wholeheartedly made. Um, and I think that everybody has a purpose. Uh, we may not understand that. You know, just because you turn 18 does not mean you're supposed to have everything figured out. You know, you, you probably don't even have everything figured out at 21 to 25. That's okay. Um, social media really tries to rush people's timelines with, you have to look like this, you have to uh, have this body type, you have to wear these labels, you have to have this many followers, this many swipe rights, you know, these people have to be your friends or you won't make it, all this other stuff. Um, people calling other people an overnight success. To me, my opinion, in my opinion only, because this is about helping to be part of someone else's survival guide someday by getting people in on tough conversations like this one. Uh, you know, those <laughs> reality truth bombs coming your way. Don't let anyone, whether it's family, friends, your own head, social media, strangers on the internet, especially in the internet wrestling community, the IWC, don't let anyone rush your timeline. Having a baby after 40 is still a huge blessing. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Buying a house at 50 is still a great accomplishment. Getting your degree after 30 is still boss. Starting your own business if that's what you want to do is amazing. Okay? You just have to do what feels right for you. What is going to work for your goals? What is going to help you achieve your definitions of happiness and success? Not someone else's, not social media's, not these old paradigms of happiness and success. You know, like times have changed for a reason um, and that's good and bad. But instead of focusing on the bad, like that one negative comment in the 100 positive comments, instead of focusing on the negative, find the positive, gravitate towards the positive because that is in of itself self-love, self-care, and it's a diet. Diet is not just what you put in your mouth as food. It's also what you feed your brain. It's also what you surround yourself with in your environment every day. You know, it comes down to the people you hang around, the people you interact with, what you do for a living, you know, your habits. What are you doing every day um, to get you just a little bit closer and a little bit closer and a little bit closer to what you want to be tomorrow, five months, 10 years from now, whatever that looks like for you. Um, and to me, I get a lot of messages and things on social media with, people needing positivity. And I was one of those people and I am still one of those people. Self-care is to me a lifetime commitment. Um, people say life is short. Yeah, okay. 
But in my opinion, life is the single longest thing you're ever going to do until you take your very last breath. Living is the longest thing you were ever going to do. Why put yourself in a position to make it the most miserable thing you've ever done is live your life. Make that a huge, positive, empowering thing. And then maybe that is the change that we've been wanting to see in the world for generations that nobody's committed themselves to yet or not enough people have paid attention to because they're they're caught up in the keeping up with the Joneses and the trappings of society that keep the poor poorer. You know, um, instead of hating on billionaires, why don't you figure out what you're not doing that the billionaires are doing and see if that aligns with what you want in life instead of instead of hating them for what they achieved. They achieved it for a reason. You know, um, don't don't get caught up in the keeping up with the Joneses and what everyone else says about you. Betty Davis said other people's opinions of me are none of my business. And I wholeheartedly agree because other people's opinions has almost never done me any good. Almost never. Um, I can give you a giant, hello, Sally Sausage. I can give you a giant laundry list of things people have said about me that have just ruined my day, ruined my week, ruined my match, ruined my month, ruined my experiences. But part of that is the fact that I somehow let all these different people have power over me that should never have had power over me. And everybody does this and we don't really connect it to what it truly is. If somebody's opinion can ruin that much, maybe you gave them too much power. Maybe you're supposed to be the only one that has that kind of power over you. So maybe instead of blaming society for all these things that we see that we think are wrong, why don't we turn the finger back on ourselves and realize that as adults, we are now the society. So it's our problem, whether it's an inherited problem from generations past, like generational curses, or the, new, the current new landscape of the world that we're in today. Who better to change that for the better for future children and generations than us? The ones that, you know, grew up with social media, the ones that have been bullied, that didn't get to escape it when they came home, like generations past, like it was there on our TV, it was there on our, on our cell phones, on our tablets and our netbooks and our computers and, you know, everything else, and along with being in, in the home and everything. Why not, why not change that so that more kids can see what real self-love looks like, what real integrity looks like, what real dreamers going after their dreams looks like and show them to not be afraid of failure because failure is what leads to success. Other people's failures help us every single day uh, and failure is a necessary step on the ladder of success. I personally believe that you learn more from failure than success. So why not learn from every successful person's failures so you don't have to make those same mistakes so then you can get to your goals faster and better and then you can learn from those other experiences and then you in and of, of yourself can be a part of someone else's survival guide. See how that works? Um, to me, there's so much that I want to say to different members of the Taylor Army who reach out to me all the time. Unfortunately, I'm only one person and you guys are thousands upon thousands. But that's what makes this so amazing is I can reach each one of you. Uh, when you listen to this podcast or you're on my YouTube channel, you know, you can learn from from different things. Not everything applies to every person, but there's little nuggets that can apply to to so many different people in so many different ways. There's billions of people in the world experiencing the same 24 hours in billions of different ways. And I think that we get so caught up in wanting to be liked and, and social media that we forget to be our most authentic selves. And that's the most freeing, powerful thing you can be because you are unique. You are made for a reason. You exist for a reason. And life is rough, so you gotta be tough. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. You deserve to make it. You deserve to fail so you can win and ultimately succeed at whatever that looks like for you. Whatever that vision board image of pure, undiluted happiness looks like for you, you deserve that. And I've thought about these things for a very long time, but I am my most authentic self today, right now, than I have ever been in my entire life. I would take who I am at 32 turning 33 um, over who I was at 23, uh, 22, 23. I was a fraction of the person I am today and I had to go through so much hurt and so much struggles and adversity to ultimately be the person I am today. So as much as, you know, you kind of want to be like, well, I wish certain things would have ended up differently or I wish, you know, I would have achieved my original definitions of what I wanted, but I achieved some semblance of everything I ever wanted since I was a 13 year old girl writing down my goals list of what my ultimate life would look like. That's amazing to be able to say. 
And I think we have to allow for that adaptability. I think we have to learn how to pivot and adapt the way that I have had to learn how to do because when we're that young, even at 18 and 20, we're, we still don't fully understand how the world works and we still don't fully understand how we fit in and stand out in that kind of world. We still have those rose colored goggles on of how we think everything works and how everything is. We haven't gone out into the world enough to experience that yet and go on our self discovery journeys to figure out who we are and what we want and who we ultimately want to become. Um, and I want to strive to explain that more often um, as repetitively as I can because I think it's so important. Um, I'm so proud to have my own podcast with Russo's brand and to be among these amazing people. I am so excited about the incredible progress I have made on my YouTube channel. I am so beyond elated to be a published author, you know, uh, to be able to say that I got to work with Impact Wrestling when they were on Spike TV, uh, drawing almost 2 million and 1 million viewers, you know, uh, I got to be extras and have tryouts and get rave reviews from people at WWE. Uh, I got to do Global Force and Ring of Honor and all of these amazing things. I've got to travel and meet people from all over the world and I'm doing even more amazing stuff with writing for Fightful and being a contributing writer for Pop Wrapped and their Hollywood team um, and I have so many other projects I'm working on that I cannot wait to share with you guys as soon as I'm allowed. You know when you put all of that together I don't think I would have been able to achieve all of those things and be so grounded and honest about it if I hadn't gone through all of those struggles that made me the person that I am today right now on this podcast with all of you don't be ashamed of your failures don't be ashamed of the hard times they and don't make them make you harder as a person and jaded use it as a learning experience to grow mistakes aren't what you think failures aren't what you think so grow every day start investing in yourself and who you want to be 10 years from now. If you're 50, still think of yourself as young. You know, you're not at level one anymore. That's amazing. Uh, you know, if you were 30 and still don't know who you are and what you want to be, figure it out. Put yourself in situations to figure it out. Put yourself into the mindset of saying things that are good about yourself every single day. It doesn't matter if you don't believe them yet, one day you will. You know, self-care, start paying attention to what your environment is. Sunflowers don't grow in the Arctic for a reason. It's not the right environment for them. If you're around people that don't believe in you, then learn to believe in yourself in the silence and then let your success be your noise. Cheer for yourself when no one else will, okay? And, and do not fret because at some points, if you work hard enough, you're gonna find those people that do believe in you someday. Those are your people.